Chapter 4 The Women In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord, who created you from a single man, Adam, and from him he created his wife, Eve, and from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah, through whom you demand your mutual rights, and do not cut the relations of kinship. Surely, Allah is ever an all-watcher over you. And give to orphans their property, and do not exchange your bad things for their good ones, and devour not their substance by adding it to your substance. Surely, this is a great sin. And if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan girls, then marry other women of your choice, two or three or four. But if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with them, then only one or the captives and the slaves that your right hands possess. That is nearer to prevent you from doing injustice. And give to the women whom you marry their bridal money with a good heart. But if they of their own good pleasure remit any part of it to you, take it and enjoy it without fear of any harm, as Allah has made it lawful. And give not to the foolish your property, which Allah has made a means of support for you, but feed and clothe them therewith, and speak to them words of kindness and justice. And try orphans as regards their intelligence, until they reach the age of marriage. If then you find sound judgment in them, release their property to them, but consume it not wastefully and hastily, fearing that they should grow up. And whoever amongst guardians is rich, he should take no wages. But if he is poor, let him have for himself what is just and reasonable according to his work. And when you release their property to them, take witness in their presence, and Allah is all-sufficient in taking account. There is a share for men and a share for women from what is left by parents and those nearest related, whether the property be small or large, a legal share. And when the relatives and the orphans and the poor are present at the time of division, give them out of the property, and speak to them words of kindness and justice. And let those guardians have the same fear in their minds as they would have for their own if they had left weak offspring behind. So let them fear Allah and speak right words. Indeed, those who unjustly eat up the property of orphans, they eat up only a fire in their bellies, and they will be burnt in the blazing fire. Allah commands you as regards your children's inheritance, to the male a portion equal to that of two females. If there are only daughters, two or more, their share is two-thirds of the inheritance. If only one, her share is half. For parents, a sixth share of inheritance to each if the deceased left children. If no children, and the parents are the only heirs, the mother has a third. If the deceased left brothers or sisters, the mother has a sixth. The distribution in all cases is after the payment of legacies and debts he may have left. You know not which of them, whether your parents or your children, are nearest to you in benefit. These fixed shares are ordained by Allah and Allah is ever all-knower, all-wise. In that which your wives leave, your share is a half if they have no child. But if they leave a child, you get a fourth of that which they leave after payment of legacies or debts that they may have left. In that which you leave, your wife's share is a fourth if you leave no child. But if you leave a child, they get an eighth of that which you leave after payment of legacies or debts that you may have left. If the man or woman whose inheritance is in question has left neither ascendants nor descendants, but has left a brother or a sister, each one of the two gets a sixth. But if more than two, they share in a third after payment of legacies or debts that he or she may have left, so that no loss is caused to anyone. This is a commandment from Allah, and Allah is ever all-knowing, most forbearing. These are the limits as regards laws of inheritance said by Allah, and whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger Muhammad will be admitted to gardens in paradise under which rivers flow to abide therein, and that will be the great success.
And whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger Muhammad and transgresses his limits, he will cast him into the fire to abide therein, and he shall have a disgraceful torment. And those of your women who commit illegal sexual intercourse, take the evidence of four witnesses from amongst you against them, and if they testify, confine them to houses until death comes to them, or Allah ordains for them some other way. And the two persons, man and woman, among you who commit illegal sexual intercourse, punish them both. And if they repent, and promise Allah that they will never repeat by committing illegal sexual intercourse and other similar sins and do righteous good deeds, leave them alone. Surely Allah is ever the one who accepts repentance, and He is most merciful. Allah accepts only the repentance of those who do evil in ignorance and foolishness and repent soon afterwards. It is they to whom Allah will forgive and Allah is ever all-knower, all-wise. And of no effect is the repentance of those who continue to do evil deeds until death faces one of them, and he says, Now I repent. Nor of those who die while they are disbelievers. For them we have prepared a painful torment. O oh, you who believe, you are forbidden to inherit women against their will, and you should not treat them with harshness that you may take away part of the bridal money you have given them, unless they commit open illegal sexual intercourse, and live with them honorably. If you dislike them, it may be that you dislike a thing, and Allah brings through it a great deal of good. But if you intend to replace a wife by another, and you have given one of them a great amount of gold as bridal money, take not the least bit of it back. Would you take it wrongfully without a right and with a manifest sin? And how could you take it back while you have gone in to each other, and they have taken from you a firm and strong covenant? And marry not women whom your fathers married, except what has already passed. Indeed, it was shameful, most hateful, and an evil way. Forbidden to you for marriage are your mothers, your daughters, your sisters, your father's sisters, your mother's sisters, your brother's daughters, your sister's daughters, your foster mother who gave you suck, your foster milk-suckling sisters, your wives' mothers, your stepdaughters under your guardianship, born of your wives to whom you have gone in, but there is no sin on you to marry their daughters if you have not gone in them, the wives of your sons who spring from your own loins, and two sisters in wedlock at the same time, except for what has already passed. Indeed, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Also forbidden are women already married, except those captives and slaves whom your right hands possess. Thus has Allah ordained for you. All others are lawful, provided you seek them in marriage with bridal money from your property, desiring chastity, not committing illegal sexual intercourse. So with those of whom you have enjoyed sexual relations, give them their bridal money as prescribed. But if, after the bridal money is prescribed, you agree mutually to give more, there is no sin on you. Surely, Allah is ever all-knowing, all-wise. And whoever of you have not the means wherewith to wed free believing women, they may wed believing girls from among those captives and slaves whom your right hands possess. And Allah has full knowledge about your faith. You are one from another. Wed them with the permission of their guardians, and give them their bridal money according to what is reasonable. They should be chaste, not adulterous, nor taking male friends. And after they have been taken in wedlock, if they commit illegal sexual intercourse, their punishment is half that for free unmarried women. This is for him among you who is afraid of being harmed in his religion or in his body. But it is better for you that you practice self-restraint, and Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Allah wishes to make clear what is lawful and what is unlawful to you, and to show you the ways of those before you, and accept your repentance. And Allah is all-knower, all-wise. Allah wishes to accept your repentance, but those who follow their lusts wish that you, believers, should deviate tremendously away from the right path. Allah wishes to lighten the burden for you, 
and man was created weak in that he cannot be patient to leave sexual intercourse with women. O oh, you who believe, consume not property among yourselves unjustly, except it be a trade amongst you by mutual consent. And do not kill yourselves, nor kill one another. Surely Allah is most merciful to you. And whoever commits that through aggression and injustice, we shall cast him into the fire, and that is easy for Allah. If you avoid the great sins which you are forbidden to do, we shall remit from you your small sins, and admit you to paradise through a noble entrance. And wish not for the things in which Allah has made some of you excel over others. For men there is reward for what they have earned, and likewise for women there is reward for what they have earned. And ask Allah of His bounty. Surely Allah is ever all-knower of everything. And to everyone, we have appointed heirs of that property left by parents and relatives. To those also with whom you have made a pledge of brotherhood, give them their due portion, wills, and so forth. Truly, Allah is ever a witness over all things. Men are the protectors and maintainers of women, because Allah has made one of them excel over the other, and because they spend to support them from their means. Therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient to Allah and to their husbands, and guard in the husband's absence what Allah orders them to guard of their chastity, husband's property, and so forth. As to those women on whose part you see ill conduct, caution them first. Next, refuse to share their beds, and last, beat them lightly, if it is useful. But if they return to obedience, seek not against them means of annoyance. Surely, Allah is ever most high, most great. If you fear a breach between the man and his wife, appoint two arbitrators, one from his family and the other from hers. If they both wish for peace, Allah will cause their reconciliation. Indeed, Allah is ever all-knower, well acquainted with all things. Worship Allah and join none with Him in worship, and do good to parents, kinsfolk, orphans, the poor, the neighbor who is near of kin, the neighbor who is a stranger, the companion by your side, the wayfarer you meet, and those slaves whom your right hand possesses. Indeed, Allah does not like such as are proud and boastful, those who are miserly and enjoy miserliness on other men, and hide what Allah has bestowed upon them of His bounties. And we have prepared for the disbelievers a disgraceful torment, and also for those who spend of their substance to be seen of men, and believe not in Allah and the last day. They are the friends of Satan, and whoever takes Satan as an intimate, then what a dreadful intimate he has. And what loss have they if they had believed in Allah and the last day, and they spend out of what Allah has given them for sustenance, and Allah is ever all-knower of them? Surely Allah wrongs not even the weight of an atom or a small gnat, but if there is any good done, he doubles it, and gives from him a great reward. How will it be then, when we bring from each nation a witness, and we bring you, O Muhammad, as a witness against these people? On that day, those who disbelieved and disobeyed the messenger Muhammad will wish that they were buried in the earth, but they will never be able to hide a single fact from Allah. O oh, you who believe, approach not the prayer when you are in a drunken state, until you know the meaning of what you utter, nor when you are in a state of sexual impurity and have not yet taken a bath, except when traveling on the road without enough water, or just passing through a mosque till you wash your whole body. And if you are ill, or on a journey, or one of you comes after answering the call of nature, or you have been in contact with women by sexual relations, and you find no water, then take for yourselves clean earth, and rub therewith your faces and hands. Truly, Allah is ever oft pardoning, oft forgiving. Have you not seen those who were given a portion of the book? They, choosing the wrong path, wish that you should go astray from the right path. Allah has full knowledge of your enemies, and Allah is sufficient as a protector, and Allah is sufficient as a helper. Among those who are Jews, there are some who displace words from their right places and say, We hear you, O Muhammad, but we disobey, and 
Hear and let you, O Muhammad, hear nothing. And listen to us with a twist of their tongues and as a mockery of the religion of Islam. If only they had said, We hear and obey, and do make us understand, it would have been better for them and more proper. But Allah has cursed them for their disbelief, so they believe not except a few. O you who have been given the scripture, believe in what we have revealed to Muhammad, confirming what is already with you, before we destroy faces and turn them backwards, or curse them as we curse the Sabbath breakers. And the commandment of Allah is always executed. Indeed, Allah forgives not that partners should be set up with him in worship, but he forgives except that anything else to whom he pleases, and whoever sets up partners with Allah in worship, he has indeed invented a tremendous sin. Have you not seen those who claim sanctity for themselves? No, but Allah sanctifies whom he pleases, and they will not be dealt with injustice in the least little thing. Look how they invent a lie against Allah, and enough is that as a manifest sin. Have you not seen those who were given a portion of the scripture? They believe in sorcery and evil, and say to the disbelievers that they are better guided as regards the way than the believers. They are those whom Allah has cursed, and he whom Allah curses, you will not find for him any helper. Or have they a share in the dominion? Then in that case, they would not give to mankind even a speck on the back of a date stone. Or do they envy men like Muhammad and his followers for what Allah has given them of his bounty? Then we had already given the family of Abraham the book and wisdom, and conferred upon them a great kingdom. Of them were some who believed in Muhammad, and of them were some who averted their faces from him, and enough is hell for burning them. Surely those who disbelieved in our signs and revelations, we shall burn them in fire. As often as their skins are roasted through, we shall change them for other skins, that they may taste the punishment again. Truly, Allah is ever most powerful, all-wise. But those who believe in the oneness of Allah and do deeds of righteousness, we shall admit them to gardens in paradise, under which rivers flow, abiding therein forever. There they shall have purified companions, and we shall admit them to shades wide and ever deepening in paradise. Indeed, Allah commands that you should render back the trust to those to whom they are due, and that when you judge between men, you judge with justice. Indeed, how excellent is the teaching which Allah gives you! Truly, Allah is ever all hearer, all seer. O you who believe! Obey Allah, and obey the Messenger Muhammad, and those of the Muslims who are in authority. And if you differ in anything amongst yourselves, refer it to Allah and His Messenger, if you believe in Allah and in the last day. That is better and more suitable for final determination. Have you seen those hypocrites who claim that they believe in that which has been sent down to you, and that which was sent down before you, and they wish to go for judgment in their disputes to the false judges, while they have been ordered to reject them? But Satan wishes to lead them far astray. And when it is said to them, Come to what Allah has sent down, and to the messenger Muhammad, you see the hypocrites turn away from you with aversion. How then, when a catastrophe befalls them because of what their hands have sent forth, they come to you swearing by Allah, we meant no more than good will and conciliation. These hypocrites are those of whom Allah knows what it is in their hearts, so turn aside from them, do not punish them, but caution them, and speak to them an effective word to believe in Allah, worship Him, obey Him, and be afraid of Him, to reach their inner selves. We sent no messenger but to be obeyed by Allah's leave. If these hypocrites, when they had been unjust to themselves, had come to you, Muhammad, and begged Allah's forgiveness, and the messenger had begged forgiveness for them, indeed, they would have found Allah all-forgiving, most merciful. But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions, and accept them with full submission. 
and if we had ordered them, saying, Kill yourselves, the innocent ones, kill the guilty ones, or leave your homes. Very few of them would have done it. But if they had done what they were told, it would have been better for them, and would have strengthened their faith. And indeed, we should have then bestowed upon them a great reward from ourselves. And indeed, we should have guided them to a straight way. And whosoever obeys Allah and the Messenger Muhammad, then they will be in the company of those on whom Allah has bestowed His grace, of the prophets, those followers of the prophets who were first and foremost to believe in them, the martyrs and the righteous, and how excellent these companions are. Such is the bounty from Allah, and Allah is sufficient as all-knower. O you who believe, take your precautions, and either go forth on an expedition in parties, or go forth altogether. There is certainly among you he who would linger behind from fighting in Allah's cause. If a misfortune befalls you, he says, Indeed, Allah has favored me in that I was not present among them. But if a bounty through victory and booty comes to you from Allah, he would surely say, as if there had never been ties of affection between you and him, Oh, I wish I had been with them, then I would have achieved a great success and a good share of booty. Let those believers who sell the life of this world for the hereafter fight in the cause of Allah. And whosoever fights in the cause of Allah and is killed or gets victory, we shall bestow on him a great reward. And what is wrong with you that you fight not in the cause of Allah, and for those weak, ill-treated, and oppressed among men, women, and children, whose cry is, Our Lord, rescue us from this town whose people are oppressors, and raise for us from you one who will protect, and raise for us from you one who will help. Those who believe fight in the cause of Allah, and those who disbelieve fight in the cause of evil. So fight you against the friends of Satan. Ever feeble indeed is the plot of Satan. Have you not seen those who were told to hold back their hands from fighting and perform prayer and give charity? But when the fighting was ordained for them, a section of them fear men as they fear Allah or even more. They say, Our Lord, why have you ordained for us fighting? Would that you had granted us respite for a short period? Say, Short is the enjoyment of this world. The hereafter is far better for him who fears Allah, and you shall not be dealt with unjustly in the least. Whosoever you may be, death will overtake you, even if you are in fortresses built up strong and high. And if some good reaches them, they say, This is from Allah. But if some evil befalls them, they say, This is from you, O Muhammad. Say, All things are from Allah. So what is wrong with these people, that they fail to understand any word? Whatever of good reaches you is from Allah, but whatever of evil befalls you, it is from yourself. And we have sent you, O Muhammad, as a messenger to mankind, and Allah is sufficient as a witness. He who obeys the messenger Muhammad has indeed obeyed Allah, but he who turns away, then we have not sent you, O Muhammad, as a watcher over them. They say, We are obedient. But when they leave you, Muhammad, a section of them spend all night in planning other than what you say. But Allah records their nightly plots, so turn aside from them, do not punish them, and put your trust in Allah. And Allah is ever all-sufficient as a disposer of affairs. Do they not then consider the Quran carefully? Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found in it many contradictions. When there comes to them some matter touching public safety or fear, they make it known among the people. If only they had referred it to the messenger or to those charged with authority among them, the proper investigators would have understood it from them directly. Had it not been for the grace and mercy of Allah upon you, you would have followed Satan except a few of you. Then fight, O Muhammad, in the cause of Allah. You are not held responsible except for yourself, and incite the believers to fight along with you. It may be Allah will restrain the evil might of the disbelievers, and Allah is stronger in might and stronger in punishing. Whosoever intercedes for a good cause will have the reward thereof, and whosoever intercedes for an evil cause will have a share in its burden. And Allah is all able to do everything.
When you are greeted with a greeting, greet in return with what is better than it, or at least return it equally. Certainly, Allah is ever a careful account taker of all things. Allah, none has the right to be worshipped but He. Surely, He will gather you together on the day of resurrection, about which there is no doubt. And who is truer in statement than Allah? Then what is the matter with you, that you are divided into two parties about the hypocrites? Allah has cast them back to disbelief because of what they have earned. Do you want to guide him whom Allah has made to go astray? And he whom Allah has made to go astray, you will never find for him any way of guidance. They wish that you reject faith, as they have rejected faith, and thus that you all become equal like one another. So take not protectors or friends from them, till they emigrate in the way of Allah to Muhammad. But if they turn back from Islam, take hold of them, and kill them wherever you find them, and take neither protectors, nor friends, nor helpers from them. Accept those who join a group between you and whom there is a treaty of peace, or those who approach you with their hearts, restraining from fighting you as well as fighting their own people. Had Allah willed, indeed He would have given them power over you, and they would have fought you. So if they withdraw from you, and fight not against you, and offer you peace, then Allah has opened no way for you against them. You will find others that wish to have security from you, and security from their people. Every time they are sent back to temptation, they yield to it. If they withdraw not from you, nor offer you peace, nor restrain their hands, take hold of them and kill them wherever you find them. In their case, we have provided you with a clear warrant against them. It is not for a believer to kill a believer, except that it be by mistake. And whosoever kills a believer by mistake, it is ordained that he must set free a believing slave, and a compensation through blood money be given to the deceased family, unless they remit it. If the deceased belonged to a people at war with you, and he was a believer, the freeing of a believing slave is prescribed. And if he belonged to a people with whom you have a treaty of mutual alliance, compensation through blood money must be paid to his family, and a believing slave must be freed. And whosoever finds the penance of freeing a slave beyond his means, he must fast for two consecutive months in order to seek repentance from Allah. And Allah is ever all-knowing, all-wise. And whoever kills a believer intentionally, his recompense is hell to abide therein, and the wrath and the curse of Allah are upon him, and a great punishment is prepared for him. O you who believe, when you go to fight in the cause of Allah, verify the truth, and say not to anyone who greets you by embracing Islam, you are not a believer, seeking the material goods of the worldly life. There are much more spoils and booties with Allah. Even as He is now, so were you yourselves before, till Allah conferred on you His favors and guided you to Islam. Therefore, be cautious in discrimination. Allah is ever well aware of what you do. Not equal are those of the believers who sit at home, except those who are disabled, and those who strive hard and fight in the cause of Allah with their wealth and their lives. Allah has preferred in grades those who strive hard and fight with their wealth and their lives above those who sit at home. Unto each Allah has promised good. But Allah has preferred those who strive hard and fight above those who sit at home by a huge reward. Degrees of higher grades from Him, and forgiveness and mercy, and Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful. Indeed, as for those whom the angels take in death while they are wronging themselves, the angels will say to them, In what condition were you? They reply, We were weak and oppressed on earth. The angels will say, Was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to emigrate therein? Such men will find their abode in hell. What an evil destination! Except the weak ones among men, women, and children who cannot devise a plan, and who are unable to direct their way. For these there is hope that Allah will forgive them, and Allah is ever oft pardoning, oft forgiving. He who emigrates from his home in the cause of Allah will find on earth many dwelling places and plenty to live by. 
And whosoever leaves his home as an emigrant unto Allah and his messenger, and death overtakes him, his reward is then surely incumbent upon Allah, and Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful. And when you Muslims travel in the land, there is no sin on you if you shorten your prayer, if you fear that the disbelievers may attack you. Indeed, the disbelievers are ever unto you, open enemies. When you, O Muhammad, are among them, and lead them in prayer, let one party of them stand up in prayer with you, taking their arms with them. When they finish their prostrations, let them take their positions in the rear, and let the other party come up which has not yet prayed, and let them pray with you, taking all the precautions and bearing arms. Those who disbelieve wish, if you were negligent of your arms and your baggage, to attack you in a single rush. But there is no sin on you if you put away your arms because of the inconvenience of rain or because you are ill, but take every precaution for yourselves. Indeed, Allah has prepared a humiliating torment for the disbelievers. When you have finished the prayer, remember Allah standing, sitting down, and lying down on your sides. But when you are free from danger, perform the prayer. Indeed, the prayer is enjoined on the believers at fixed hours. And do not be weak in the pursuit of the enemy. If you are suffering hardships, then surely they too are suffering hardships as you are suffering. But you have a hope from Allah for the reward of paradise, that for which they hope not. And Allah is ever all-knowing, all-wise. Surely we have sent down to you, O Muhammad, this Quran in truth that you might judge between men by that which Allah has shown you. So be not a pleader for the treacherous, and seek the forgiveness of Allah. Certainly, Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful, and argue not on behalf of those who deceive themselves. Indeed, Allah does not like anyone who is a betrayer of his trust and indulges in crime. They may hide their crimes from men, but they cannot hide them from Allah for he is with them by his knowledge when they plot by night in words that he does not approve. And Allah ever encompasses what they do. You are those who have argued for them in the life of this world, but who will argue for them on the day of resurrection against Allah, or who will then be their defender? And whoever does evil or wrongs himself, but afterwards seeks Allah's forgiveness, he will find Allah oft forgiving most merciful. And whoever earns sin, he earns it only against himself. And Allah is ever all-knowing, all-wise. And whoever earns a fault or a sin, and then throws it onto someone innocent, he has indeed burdened himself with falsehood and a manifest sin. Had not the grace of Allah and His mercy been upon you, O Muhammad, a party of them would certainly have made a decision to mislead you. But in fact, they mislead none except their own selves, and no harm can they do to you in the least. Allah has sent down to you the Quran and wisdom, and taught you that which you knew not. And ever great is the grace of Allah unto you, O Muhammad. There is no good in most of their secret talks, save in him who orders charity in Allah's cause or orders all the good and righteous deeds which Allah has ordained, or conciliation between mankind. And he who does this, seeking the good pleasure of Allah, we shall give him a great reward. And whoever contradicts and opposes the messenger Muhammad after the right path has been shown clearly to him, and follows other than the believer's way, we shall keep him in the path he has chosen, and burn him in hell. What an evil destination! Indeed, Allah forgives not the sin of setting our partners in worship with Him, but He forgives whom He pleases. Sins other than that, and whoever sets up partners in worship with Allah, has indeed strayed far away. All those who worship others than Allah invoke female deities besides Him, but they invoke nothing but Satan, a persistent rebel. Allah cursed him, and he, Satan, said, I will take an appointed portion of your slaves. Indeed, I will mislead them, and surely I will arouse in them false desires, and certainly I will order them to slit the ears of cattle, and indeed I will order them to change the nature created by Allah. 
And whoever takes Satan as a protector or helper instead of Allah has surely suffered a manifest loss. Satan makes promises to them and arouses in them false desires, and Satan's promises are nothing but deceptions. The dwelling of such people is hell, and they will find no way of escape from it. But those who believe in the oneness of Allah and do deeds of righteousness, we shall admit them to the gardens under which rivers flow in paradise to dwell therein forever. Allah's promise is the truth, and whose words can be truer than those of Allah? It will not be in accordance with your desires, nor those of the people of the Scripture. Whosoever works evil will have the recompense thereof, and he will not find any protector or helper besides Allah. And whoever does righteous good deeds, male or female, and is a true believer in the oneness of Allah, such will enter paradise, and not the least injustice will be done to them. And who can be better in religion than one who submits his face to Allah by following Allah's religion of Islamic monotheism, and he is a good doer, and follows the religion of Abraham, the true in faith? And Allah did take Abraham as a beloved friend. And to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, and Allah is ever encompassing all things. They ask your legal instruction concerning women. Say, Allah instructs you about them and about what is recited unto you in the book concerning the orphan girls, whom you give not the prescribed portions as regards bridal money and inheritance, and yet whom you desire to marry, and concerning the children who are weak and oppressed, and that you stand firm for justice to orphans. And whatever good you do, Allah is ever all aware of it. And if a woman fears cruelty or desertion on her husband's part, there is no sin on them both if they make terms of peace between themselves. And making peace is better. And human inner selves are swayed by greed. But if you do good and keep away from evil, indeed, Allah is ever well acquainted with what you do. You will never be able to do perfect justice between wives, even if it is your ardent desire. So do not incline too much to one of them by giving her more of your time and provision, so as to leave the other hanging, neither divorced or married. And if you do justice and do all that is right and fear Allah by keeping away from all that is wrong, then Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful. But if they separate by divorce, Allah will provide abundance for every one of them from His bounty. And Allah is ever all-sufficient for His creatures' needs, all-wise. And to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. And indeed, we have recommended to the people of the Scripture before you, and to you, O Muslims, that you all fear Allah and keep your duty to Him. But if you disbelieve, then unto Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. And Allah is ever rich, free of all wants, worthy of all praise. And to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, and Allah is ever all-sufficient as a disposer of affairs. If He wills, He can destroy you, O people, and bring others, and Allah is ever all-potent over that. Whoever desires a reward in this life of the world, then with Allah alone and none else is the reward of this worldly life and of the hereafter. And Allah is ever all-hearer, all-seer. O you who believe, stand out firmly for justice as witnesses to Allah, even though it be against yourselves or your parents or your kin, be he rich or poor, Allah is a better protector to both than you. So follow not the lusts of your hearts, lest you may avoid justice. And if you distort your witness or refuse to give it, indeed, Allah is ever well acquainted with what you do. O oh, you who believe, believe in Allah and His Messenger Muhammad, and the Quran which He has sent down to His Messenger, and the Scripture which He sent down to those before Him. And whosoever disbelieves in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, and the last day, then indeed He has strayed far away.
Indeed, those who believe then disbelieve, then believe again, and again disbelieve, and go on increasing in disbelief, Allah will not forgive them, nor guide them on the right way. Give to the hypocrites the tidings that there is for them a painful torment. Those who take disbelievers for protectors or helpers instead of believers, do they seek honor, power, and glory with them? Indeed, then to Allah belongs all honor, power, and glory. And it has already been revealed to you in this Quran that when you hear the verses of Allah being denied and mocked at, then sit not with them until they engage in a talk other than that. But if you stayed with them, certainly in that case you would be like them. Surely Allah will collect the hypocrites and disbelievers all together in hell. Those hypocrites who wait and watch about you, if you gain a victory from Allah, they say, Were we not with you? But if the disbelievers gain a success, they say to them, Did we not side with you, and did we not protect you from the believers? Allah will judge between you all on the day of resurrection, and never will Allah grant to the disbelievers a way to triumph over the believers. Indeed, the hypocrites seek to deceive Allah, but it is He who deceives them. And when they stand up for prayer, they stand with laziness and to be seen of men, and they do not remember Allah but little. They are swaying between this and that, belonging neither to these nor to those. And he whom Allah sends astray, you will not find for him a way to the truth of Islam. O you who believe, take not for protectors or helpers or friends disbelievers instead of believers. Do you wish to offer Allah a manifest proof against yourselves? Indeed, the hypocrites will be in the lowest depths of the fire. No helper will you find for them, except those who repent from hypocrisy, do righteous good deeds, hold fast to Allah, and purify their religion for Allah by worshipping none but Him, and do good for Allah's sake only, and not to show off. Then they will be with the believers, and Allah will grant to the believers a great reward. Why should Allah punish you if you have thanked Him and have believed in Him? And Allah is ever all appreciative of good, all-knowing. Allah does not like that evil should be uttered in public, except by Him who has been wronged. And Allah is ever all-hearer, all-knower. Whether you mankind disclose by good words of thanks a good deed done to you in the form of a favor by someone, or conceal it, or pardon an evil, indeed, Allah is ever oft pardoning, all-powerful. Indeed, those who disbelieve in Allah and His messengers, and wish to make distinction between Allah and His messengers, by believing in Allah and disbelieving in His messengers, saying, We believe in some, but reject others, and wish to adopt a way in between, they are in truth disbelievers. And we have prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating torment. And those who believe in Allah and His messengers and make no distinction between any of them, we shall give them their rewards. And Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful. The people of the Scripture ask you to cause a book to descend upon them from heaven. Indeed, they asked Moses for even greater than that when they said, Show us Allah in public. But they were struck with thunder and lightning for their wickedness. Then they worshipped the calf, even after clear proofs, evidences, and signs had come to them. Even so, we forgave them, and we gave Moses a clear proof of authority. And for their covenant, we raised over them Mount Sinai, and on the other occasion we said, Enter the gate prostrating or bowing with humility. And we commanded them, Transgress not by doing worldly works on the Sabbath, and we took from them a firm covenant. Because of their breaking the covenant, and of their rejecting the signs and revelations of Allah, and of their killing the prophets unjustly, and of their saying, Our hearts are wrapped with coverings. No, Allah has set a seal upon their hearts because of their disbelief, so they believe not but a little. And because of their disbelief and utterings against Mary, a grave false charge that she has committed illegal sexual intercourse, and because of their saying in boast, We killed Jesus the Messiah, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they killed him not, 
nor crucified him. But the resemblance of Jesus was put over another man, and they killed that man. And those who differ therein are full of doubts. They have no certain knowledge. They follow nothing but conjecture. For surely they killed him not. But Allah raised Jesus up with his body and soul unto himself, and he is in the heavens. And Allah is ever all-powerful, all-wise. And there is none of the people of the Scripture but who must believe in Jesus, son of Mary, as only a messenger of Allah and a human being before his death. And on the day of resurrection, Jesus will be a witness against them. For the wrongdoing of the Jews, we made unlawful to them certain good foods which had been lawful to them. And for their hindering many from Allah's way, and their taking of usury, though they were forbidden from taking it, and their devouring of men's substance wrongfully, through bribery and the like thereof. And we have prepared for the disbelievers among them a painful torment. But those among them who are well grounded in knowledge, and the believers who believe in what has been sent down to you, Muhammad, and what was sent down before you, and those who perform prayer, and give charity, and believe in Allah and the last day, it is they to whom we shall give a great reward. Indeed, we have inspired you, O Muhammad, as we inspired Noah and the prophets after him. We inspired Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, the twelve sons of Jacob, Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, and Solomon, and to David we gave the Psalms. And some messengers we have mentioned to you before, and some messengers we have not mentioned to you, and to Moses Allah spoke directly, messengers as bearers of good news as well as of warning, in order that mankind should have no plea against Allah after the messengers. And Allah is ever all-powerful, all-wise. But Allah bears witness to that which He has sent down the Quran unto you, O Muhammad. He has sent it down with His knowledge, and the angels bear witness. And Allah is all-sufficient as a witness. Indeed, those who disbelieve and prevent mankind from the path of Allah, they have certainly strayed far away. Indeed, those who disbelieve and did wrong, Allah will not forgive them, nor will He guide them to any way except the way of hell, to dwell therein forever, and this is ever easy for Allah. O mankind, indeed there has come to you the messenger with the truth from your Lord. So believe in Him, it is better for you. But if you disbelieve, then certainly to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and the earth, and Allah is ever all-knowing, all-wise. O people of the Scripture, do not exceed the limits in your religion, nor say of Allah anything but the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was no more than a messenger of Allah and His word, which He bestowed on Mary and a spirit created by Him. So believe in Allah and His messengers. Say not, Three Trinity, cease. It is better for you, for Allah is the one God. Glory be to Him. Far exalted is he above, having a son. To him belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. And Allah is all-sufficient as a disposer of affairs. The Messiah will never be proud to reject to be a slave to Allah, nor the angels who are near to Allah. And whosoever rejects his worship and is proud, then he will gather them all together unto himself. So as for those who believed in the oneness of Allah and did deeds of righteousness, He will give their due rewards and more out of His bounty. But as for those who refuse His worship and were proud, He will punish them with a painful torment, and they will not find for themselves besides Allah any protector or helper. O mankind, indeed there has come to you a convincing proof in the Prophet Muhammad from your Lord, and we send down to you a manifest light in this Koran. So as for those who believed in Allah and held fast to Him, He will admit them to His mercy and grace in paradise, and guide them to Himself by a straight path. They ask you for a legal verdict. Say, Allah directs thus about those who leave neither descendants nor ascendants as heirs. 
If it is a man that dies, leaving a sister but no child, she shall have half the inheritance.